Hello and welcome to episode number 32 of Quarrelsome Rhinoceros Stitches. My name is Monica, I'm the host. This is a uh, knitting and hand crafting podcast that is uh, related to all fiber arts. Um, I sew, I knit, I crochet, um, I even do embroidery sometimes, um, and eventually I'd like to get into spinning and weaving. Um, yeah, so um, this is episode number 32. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since I podcasted last, so I have a couple of things to share with you. Um, it's been sort of an end of the summer... Um, I've had an end of the summer knitting slump, so I have decided to um, do other crafts instead. So. I because I can't just do nothing so so most of the time I'm either knitting or I'm while I'm watching TV or I am finding some other craft to do while I'm at my computer um, so yeah anyway you can find me on social media um, I am Quarrelsome Rhino almost everywhere on the internet. Um, I will put my social links over here. Um, <laughs> and I am coming to you from Bangor, Maine, which is kind of in the middle part of Maine, I would say. And, um, oh, yeah. And I have uh, my puppy who, well, he's eight years old, he's not really a puppy. Who wants to come say hi on the podcast, but... Or really, he just wants to put his head in my lap and distract me. Um, anyway, um, I think I'm going to get right into the content. I don't have a whole lot to share, so it's probably going to be a shorter episode. So, first, last time I showed you a work in progress um, that I started while I was on vacation in uh, July that I picked up some yarn while I was in Florida and then uh, I immediately started knitting with it so I can make a shawl and I have not blocked this shawl yet. I still haven't gotten around to blocking the last like three or four, four projects that I have finished. So um, eventually when I block them I will take pictures of them and and put, make Ravelry pages for them. So um, I made this wingspan shawl and here it is completed and then there's the other end it is it is actually my wingspan which I think is kind of cool um, but so you make these uh, short row triangles to make a shawl the last time I showed it to you I was in the middle of this section this triangle right here with the green so I'll go through them one by one to show you which stitch patterns I used because I decided to just do sort of an amalgamation of different uh, stitch patterns, obviously. So um, this one is these, the first one I did was a stockinette section. And I did garter stitch border all of these so that when I block it, it will not roll, hopefully. Um, and then, and also I wanted to use as much of this yarn, this um, really gorgeous Twin Mommy Creations yarn um, that as much as I could so that I didn't have a bunch of leftovers and I have just enough I think to put in my blanket. So the next stitch section is a garter stitch section with just that gorgeous yarn. Um, and then I striped, the next section is a reverse stockinette stripe um, with black and I really like how that one looks. Um, I really like the sort of confetti aspect of it. Um, the next section is just all black. It's probably hard to see the stitch pattern that's on it, but it is a slip stitch pattern. Oh, there, that makes it a little easier. Um, and then the next section is green striped with both the um, main yarn and the black yarn. And then the section after that, I did an eyelet section that I am in love with. I love this stitch pattern so much. It makes me really, really happy. So I did a garter, uh, basically I did an eyelet row. 
I knit back and then I did one um, one repeat of garter stitch so I did a uh, forward and back of garter stitch and then I did another eyelet row so it gives this like sort of garter separation for the eyelets and I really really like how it looks so I may end up um, knitting a shawl that uses this texture as part of its lace texture um, or part of its lace uh, sections so I may end up designing a new sh shawl because of this stitch pattern, and I really, really like it. Um, it was pretty mind-numbing, like, it really was, uh, it basically, like, so I don't think about stockinette, and I don't think about garter. Um, this was just as easy for me, and it turned out really, really well. I still did it while I was watching things, and I barely had to look at my knitting, so... I really enjoy it. Um, so the next section that I did, I was running out of the black yarn and I didn't really want to um, get another skein of it, so I just used some other scraps that were in my, in my, um, in my stash that I just didn't think I was going to use for anything else, and I'm pretty sure that this, this is a stroll, nitpick stroll. And I'm sure that it's just called gray or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I used the rest, uh, or I used some more of that green. Um, this section is sort of a broken stockinette section, so there's some garter stitch uh, rows and some, um, some stockinette rows. And then the last section is just uh, an eyelet section, a little bit modified from the one that the one that I did before because I didn't want to make it exactly the same. So it's only a few eyelets rather than um, all of the eyelets. <laughs> so um, I really enjoy this shawl. I think it is going to be really fun to wear. I don't have anything. The reason why I chose to put greens and blacks and grays in there is so that I feel like I can wear it with black or I feel like I can wear it with green because I don't have a whole lot of clothing that is this color. Um, I never used to think that this sort of color palette goes with my hair so I never used to wear it but I have decided that I don't care if it goes with my hair or not um, and that I will wear it if I think it is pretty. So that is my my new sort of revelation. <laughs> um, but I really enjoy how it looks. I really enjoy that it's sort of flowy and not very structured. Um, I think it is the perfect palette cleanser kind of project. So if you're looking to do a wingspan, it is, so it's called Wingspan, and it is by uh, Mei Lin of Tricotery Yarns. So you can look up if you just look up wingspan, you'll you'll find it for sure. Um, I will also link it as well. But yeah, I just I'm really I really liked this project. I think this project um, is a really good palette cleanser, and I could move on to other more complicated projects once it was over. And um, yeah, so and that is exactly what I did. So I only have two more knitting things to share with you. Um, the next podcast I will have a lot more to share, I'm sure. Um, the And neither of these things you've seen before, one of them is very tiny because I just cast it on last night. So um, I got bored one afternoon and I decided I really needed um, some, uh, like a new project to work on, so I decided to um, cast on a sock. And uh, I didn't want a boring sock, I wanted a, a colorwork sock because I don't really have very many of those. Actually, I don't think I have any of those. I've got some, like, different stitch socks, but no, like, actual colorwork socks. So, I'm doing mosaic knitting, and I'm just using two uh, Knit Picks yarns. This is the... It's a Heather, I know that. But I don't know what it's actually called. I don't have the tag for it anymore. Um, it is this really purpley heather color. If I remember, I'll put the, the color name on the screen. Um, and white, and it's this sort of zigzagging back and forth kind of pattern. 
Um, the thing that I find really fascinating about this is that it actually is just striping. It's just slipping stitches in a particular order um, on the stripes to make it look like this. So at first I was going to make them arm warmers and then I didn't really want to stop and so I just put in a, um, a heel, like where I'm going to put my heel, and then, and here I am still going. I mean, I guess I could still make it a hand warmer. I could actually just be done with it now and then just have a cool arm warmer. Anyway, um, <laughs> so that is what I have been, what I worked on a little bit. I didn't do a whole lot um, of it, or I haven't done a whole lot of it in the last couple of days. Oops, I dropped a whole bunch of stitches. Hold on while I rescue my knitting here. Live rescuing of knitting. Ooh. Just don't want to lose those stitches. Okay, I will fix that, those later because did not pick them up properly, but at least the needle's in there. So, um, so yeah, that's what I worked on. Um, I think I did all of this in one day uh, because this stitch pattern is addictive. So, <laughs> I am done with it now. Maybe. Maybe I'll just make it an arm warmer. I don't seem to want to finish socks lately for whatever reason. I start socks and I don't finish them, as evidenced by the sock that I brought with me as travel knitting to knit while I went to Florida, that I still am about an inch before I start the toe decreases, and it's just a stockinette sock. It's not going to be that hard to finish, but apparently I just can't. Um, anyway, so that knitting project hopefully I will actually finish um, and then I cast on a hat last night and this is this is how far I am so, so that I mean the, I'm getting the the sort of the flow back of knitting but uh, it did take me four or five tries to get this cast on last night because I tried to do a tubular cast on and for some reason it was not working I could not get the tubular cast on to actually work for me, and I have done it in the past. I made a weekender shawl, or a weekender sweater, which starts with a tubular cast on, and I've done it before, and I just don't know why I couldn't get it to work last night. So I'll have to try again when I have a little bit more patience uh, to knit. So um, the yarn that I'm using for this is... Um, Swan's Island All-American Collection. It's a sport weight and it is evergreen and I am going to make it a color work hat. So this is, uh, I can't remember the name of this color. It's like sand or something like that, but it is the same company. They're both Swan's Island. So it's like this dark green and this sort of uh, camely brown, um, sandy brown. And I really like them together. Um, I don't know what the color work part is going to be yet, but I'm hoping I might do something similar to this. Um, just, I mean, like, I mean this style. So I may do mosaic knitting instead of like stranded color work. I did attempt to do a color work mitt, but my color work, stranded color work gauge is so different from my regular gauge that it was, it was way too tight. And I will try again um, because I do have a pattern that I really would like to do, but it's so different that I think that I need a little bit more time and practice in order to get it right. So, so I've cast that on and I'm going to be working on it here pretty soon. Um, and I have, I still have a couple, like I have a sweater, I still have a sock on the needles, so hopefully I can get that, that sort of rhythm back and, and work on that. But in the meantime, I do have several other crafts, and I'll show you the thing that you've seen before first. Um, I'm working on a project, a cross-stitch project for my mom for Mother's Day, which is supposed to be this month. It might end up being next month, whatever. Um, <laughs> um, 
and it is a quote from Firefly, and I have finished all of the words. So, I swear by my pretty floral bonnet, I will end you. So that is, um, I worked on that right after I last podcasted. I only had the rest of bonnet, a comma, and then I will end you to finish. Um, now I'm going to put some flowers, some little stylized flowers around the outside, and then I will frame it, and then I'll send it to her. So, I think I'm only going to need like a four inch, a four by six, yeah, a four by six frame. So it'll be pretty small, so I can just pop it in a little padded mailer and then send it off to her. And I'm really excited about it. Um, I really enjoyed knitting, or knitting, I really enjoyed cross-stitching the words, so I'm hoping that I'll be equally excited to cross-stitch the little flowers. And then I will be really excited to be done with it, because it has been a project since February, March? April? I think March is probably more accurate. And so it'll be nice to get that finished. Um, I will have to wash it, I think, when I'm done, because it has a lot of dog hair on it. Because my dog sheds a lot. It's one of the reasons why I don't want to have any kind of crafting business, because I don't have a way to separate my dog from his hair. That's not what I meant. I don't have any way to separate my projects from my dog hair because he's everywhere. So, and I don't shut him out of my crafting room because I don't actually have like a separate crafting room. This is just my bedroom. So, um, anyway, um, while I wasn't knitting, I was actually crocheting. This only took me about two days. Um, I also have a book that I want to share in conjunction with this. That I forgot to grab before I started filming. So, um, I got the Pika, the Animal Friends of Pika Pow um, crochet book. Um, I got it mostly because I really want to crochet this rhino. Um, but I will show you some of the animal, all of the animals that are in it. Um, so this has, it has so many different patterns in it, and I, I think all of them are really adorable. I really, really love this little bat. Um, I don't know who my next one is going to be. I love this little bear, this little guy. Oh, I love all of the animals in this book. So, um, it has been a really long time since I worked on any Amigurumi projects, but... I really enjoy doing it, so especially seeing it all come together and making something. So the first one that I made, um, I made for a friend of mine. Let me actually just show you the picture, one of the pictures of him specifically. All right, so there he is. So this little wolf I made for a friend of mine. His name is Harry Wolf. Um, so I listen to, and I am a part of now, a role-playing podcast. Um, we are, we use the Open Legends system, which is, um, it is another RPG system where, um, or not the regular, like, D&D, &D, like, that's the, the mass one that everybody knows, but Open Legend is an open source role-playing game and it really is very it is like the name suggests it's very open you can have any kind of setting any kind of story you want to tell um this this role-playing game system will allow you to tell that story um and it is really really fun it is called exploding dice um it was formerly the mana pool which is um, we have started sort of a rebrand of it, and um, those that will come, the the rebranding will will take in the middle of October. But the the we're starting to sort of rebrand now. Um, so it is called Exploding Dice. You can look for it. It is geek-io.net/slash/the-mana-pool for now. Um, so I'll put a link down below, and then I'll put it on the screen here. Um, so it is. A yeah, a role-playing podcast. So one of the characters is a wolf, wolfman, thing. Um, 
<laughs> so his name is Kai Silvermoon and he is a wolf man and when he is in his wolfy sort of form he has these bright blue eyes and he is white almost all over um, and he's got like silver kind of in his fur anyway so I crocheted a little Kai Silvermoon so here is the little wolf guy so I basically just used the bare bones of the pattern not the color part of the pattern um, I did use three different yarns for this for this little guy um, they're all commercial yarns um, that I just got from a big big box craft store um, all of them have some of them are all acrylic some of them are um, Sorry, I'm trying to get some of my dog's hair off of this. Um, some of them are all acrylic, some of them have cotton content. Um, I prefer cotton yarn for amigurumi because it tends to hold its shape better and longer. The acrylic yarn, it doesn't hold its shape. I, I don't enjoy working with acrylic yarn in general. I would prefer to work in cotton if I'm gonna do these sort of little creatures. Um, I find acrylic to be very harsh on my hands, especially if it's cheap acrylic. Um, that being said, I haven't tried like nitpicks acrylic. I have heard really good things about them. I haven't used it yet. So anyway, um, here is the little wolf. So the yarns that I used, and there is his little fuzzy tail. So the yarns that I used um, are this like fuzzy white sort of weird fuzzy white one um and then i don't know if it's going to show up on camera but the yarn that i used for his body actually has like um it has a thread with it that is like a holographic um, like color shifting kind of thing oh you can kind of see it sparkle a little bit on camera, like a tiny bit i don't know if you're gonna be able to see it very well at all Anyway, um, so it does actually have kind of like a shimmery kind of effect with it. Um, and then I have a plain white acrylic that I used for this part of his face here. Um, and then the eyes are safety eyes. Um, I made up these eyebrows and I embroidered him a little smile because he looks sort of mischievous. And then I um, embroidered some of the fuzzy yarn into his ear and then I used the fuzzy yarn for the bottom part of his muzzle um, and so I did this and then I realized one of the other characters um, makes him a, sh uh, a big cloak so I decided to knit a little cloak for him so this is his little cloak it's black it's got that same sort of like color shifting um, holographic type um, strand running with it it is the same cotton yarn it is just in the black so um, so you can see it way better on the black but it still it looks really cool so the in the role-playing podcast the character who makes the the sh cloak um, I keep trying wanting to call it a shawl um, Embroider small like moons and and stars on it because he Kai is actually from the moon so so I made up the pattern for this because I know how um, Increases and decreases affect kn um, knitting straight stockinettes, so I Just kind of made it up. I Think I cast on about 60 stitches then I worked in stockinette for um several inches i think i think it's like 10 inches so the doll i think is just over a foot um and so i worked so that it would hit him right right above where his feet are so you can only see like a little tiny bit of him um outside of the cloak um, and then i knit all the way up until i wanted to start the shoulder part which i knew i wanted to take a couple of inches or like about a half inch or so um and I did some a bunch of decreases I think I decreased the stitch count by half for the neck at least half um, 
and then I started some increases and made the hood and then I turned it inside out when I thought it was done and did a three needle bind off and that is honestly that is it so um, here he is in his cloak I also did do a garter stitch um, sort of side like panel um, like to make it not roll but it ended up curling inwards anyway and I thought it looked better without it in the way so I um, actually tacked it down and um, sewed it to the inside so it sort of reinforces the edge rather than being um, out and I I like how it looks a lot better than it was looking when I first finished the cloak so yeah so there is Kai Silvermoon he is so good I am very excited to send this off literally when I'm done recording this podcast he will be put into a Ziploc bag and then um, put into a box of some kind and then sent off to Florida where he will live um, with his new best friend. I am so excited for this. Um, I am definitely going to be doing more Amigurumi in the future because, I mean, I love it. I have, I have, didn't realize how much I missed it. I honestly finished this guy in two days. So the first day I did his head, um, including the mouth and the eyebrows, uh, and embroider, I mean the muzzle, the embroidery, and the eyebrows. I put him all together without the ears. He looks very strange without his ears just like any animal. Um, <laughs> and then the second day I did the entire body, both of the arms, the cloak, and stuffed him and finished him. Oh, and the ears. Um, because I loved it so much. And also I had a lot of extra time. So, so there is that. That is the bulk of what I worked on the last couple of weeks because that is, um, yeah. So, there is Kai. He is great. The next thing I'll talk about are these bags that I sewed. So a couple of years ago I made, my grandmother is a preschool teacher, and a couple of years ago I made her some drawstring bags for her classroom um, because as one of the exercises that they do in pre-k is sort of a, um, sort of a, like, a uh, sensory test. So they put an object, say like a big Lego block or something, into the bottom of this bag and the um, the small children are supposed to reach into the bag and feel it and try and guess what it is without being able to see it. Um, and I think it's a really cool exercise. Anyway, so my grandmother asked me to make her some drawstring bags so that she could do this. And um, she and her co-teacher, uh, her co-teacher actually uh, got a new job so they are no longer teaching together and she's really sad about it and um, he took the bags with him except that I made them for the classroom so they were supposed to stay with my grandmother um, so she bought the materials for me to make his own set so that he wasn't sad that he didn't have them so we bought the fabric the other day at the craft store um, and I made him some drawstring bags and so it's this adorable dinosaur fabric. I absolutely love this fabric so much. I think this little dinosaur's face is so cute. Okay, so we got three different contrasting ones for the inside. So we got a blue, a green, and an orange. So this one is the green one on the inside. Um, and then it's got like a drawstring pull. And it's kind of, it actually is a really nice size for like a sock project. Um, I feel like I could probably put like one cake of yarn in here. Yeah, see, one, one cake of yarn successfully hidden. Um, I absolutely can see this as sort of a sock project bag. So maybe I'll have to make myself some. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so there's the green one. I really like the shade of green that we picked. It's one of my very favorite shades of green. Um, and then uh, the orange one, sort of a bright, or sort of a pale orange, really. There's that. And then a blue one. So I really enjoyed working on these. They took me about three or four hours, I'd say. 
to make one of them. Or to make all three of them. I made them like sort of assembly line style. So I traced all of the um, pattern, cut all the fabric, um, sewed them concurrently. And it took me, yeah, it took me about three hours, I'd say. Three or four. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy this. And I think I'm going to be starting to make my own project bags. Um, I don't believe that I will ever sell them, but I will at least make them for myself so that I can actually protect my projects from dog hair um, because I don't have enough project bags. Most of the project bags I do have are like tote style bags for like bigger projects and um, they don't get keep dog hair off of anything. So they're not really that useful. Um, <laughs> so I don't actually understand why I have them if they're not going to help keep dog hair off of the off of the um, project. So anyway, um, I think that's all I have for like crafting content. The only other thing that I wanted to share was a book that I'm reading right now um, because I am really, really enjoying it. Um, I have sort of, I sort of dove back into reading headfirst and I have not stopped. So I, when I can't bring knitting, I just bring a book and I sit there and I can read for hours. So I have read in the last three months, I want to say I have read about 15 books, maybe at least. Um, so I ha am started this not that long ago. I'm more than halfway through it. It is called Uprooted by Naomi Novik. Um, it is a really, really cool story um, that reminds me of like Polish and Russian folk tales and fairy tales. Um, it is really nice. Um, my, my friend read this and recommended it to me. And when she recommended it to me, she told me, um, that it is like a sort of, it is a fantasy novel, but it is not set in fake England like most fantasy novels are set in. Um, it is absolutely more reminiscent, reminiscent rather, of Eastern European um, folklore and fairy tales and stuff like that than it is of Western European folk tales and fairy tales and stuff like that. So it is a really, really good book. Um, I really enjoy 